Hello fellow crafters, this is Lon Vator, back from the States, back in a new flat, and back with a new tutorial. Now today what we're going to do is... A modular fountain! Let's do this! Okay, what I'm gonna do is use this small figure, because it's exactly the right size to make a statue, uh, on top of the fountain. So as you can see, I have trimmed uh, the bottom of the statue with my Dremel, it's made in some kind of metal. And I'm going to use it uh, to put on top of the fountain. And as you can see here, I'm going to do a fountain in the style of uh, 13th century uh, fountains. I'm going to do actually several of them. And, uh, and there you go. Let's do this. But if we are to do some water ponds, I'm going to start with two batisteries. They're going to be super fast to do. So as you can see, I'm going to cut a base out of cardboard. Very thin cardboard. And then I'm basically going to use just two, uh, two caps, two bottle caps. I'm going to put some toothpicks. Using a nail file, I'm going to trim them. Then I'm going to do some marks on the second one, because uh, the second one didn't have any marks uh, to, to put the columns on. So I'm carefully choosing where to put them. And I'm gluing it on a base, and I chose an octagonal base for a change. There you go. It's a little different. And as you can see here, I've glued in uh, some uh, thicker, like a barbecue uh, skirt, because uh, uh, it was obviously bigger than the first batisteries. So I'm gluing everything on the ball cap. There you go. And now what I'm gonna do is uh, use the, um, the base as a template to cut in foam. Because what I wanna do is a sort of lid that's gonna be uh, on the top. Not really a lid per se, but at least a sort of ledge. So I'm gonna use some ink uh, to uh, cover uh, the rim of the ball cap and I'm basically going to use the ball cap as a stamp just to get the right cutout zone on the foam. Then I'm going to fit it in and then file the excess of foam. There you go. Then what I'm going to use is some uh, some paste, some Pimo paste. You could use something else, anything that dries uh, uh, up to be uh, solid, to be um, anything really that is malleable and that you can use to sculpt that isn't too expensive. I'm using it to make the, the bottom of the batisteries. You can use uh, water at the end to soften the curves. There you go. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is the actual big fountain I want to do. So as you can see, I did the overall shape of the base uh, using a compass. It was sheer luck, of course, but I found a design of a 13th century fountain that actually matched the design that was on the statue you know, on the, on the base of the statue I had. So that was really cool. So first, I'm making some small pillars and I'm using this foam. Now, I really recommend if you're gonna use resin like I'm gonna do later, to use something else than this foam because it reacted oddly to the resin I used. So as you can see, I'm using strong glue uh, to make the different uh, sections, the different walls, tiny walls of the fountain. Uh, to retain the water, and I'm gonna do this with uh, just a very simple foam. So I'm cutting out the excess just to have a nice fitting. Doesn't matter if it isn't totally regular, because I'm gonna do um, a ledge on top. So I basically took a compass and uh, took the radius of the different circles, and I used it to make a ledge. So I'm gonna cut them in half. There you go. And I'm gonna be able to make some ledges. Now, make sure if you're using strong glue that the foam you're using doesn't react oddly. This uh, white foam doesn't react, so it's pretty cool. So now I'm gonna cut out the base. To be totally honest, I could have done that before. Maybe it would have been uh, way easier. But hey, it's no big deal. So there you go, as you can see, now I'm trimming the edges uh, of the ledges taking care of uh, the extra foam, the little failings and the cutouts. And I'm giving it a more natural look. 
Okay, what I'm gonna do now is a second fountain, very small one. So I'm basically starting with a circle, as you can see. And I'm gonna do an octagon, just like the base of the baptistry. But I'm gonna do it properly. So I'm using the radius uh, of the circle. And this way I'm gonna found out the diagonals. This is going to be the base of a small fountain I'm going to do, an easier one. So what we're going to do is two batisteries that are almost already done. There's just need for our paints. A huge fountain and a small one that I've cut out, as you can see. So I'm using it as a template and I'm going to back up the base with foam to be able to engrave it and give it a stone, a, a stone texture. So there you go. Now I'm going to do some cutouts to give the impressions these are different uh, stones. I really took model on one of the, um, the fountains on this one. And then I'm gonna glue in uh, these parts that have been beveled on the edges to be able to fit properly. There you go. Very nice. And now I'm gonna trim to give a more interesting look to give the impression it was sculpted. I'm gonna use this uh, aluminum foil to give texture. There you go. Uh, now you can uh, also take a smaller piece if you want to make a more precise texture. Of course, I could have uh, textured it before. As you can see, I've also added um, a magnet. You're going to see why afterwards. Now there you go. As you can see, I've skipped a step because I lost some footage. But as you can see, I've put a central part in the big fountain. And as you can see, I'm also adding some magnets. What I'm trying to do is a modular fountain. Cut some uh, tin can topper just to make uh, the parts that are going to be able to stick on the magnets. Uh, but just bear in mind, guys, uh, be careful with this. It's uh, very sharp. I'm actually going to glue it on the bottom of one of these small gargoyles that are going to be removable. I'm going to be able to stick them there. They're going to hold. But I'm going to be able to remove them, change them, put them somewhere else if I want. And as you can see, I've put a big ass uh, piece of tin underneath uh, the figure that is actually very heavy so as you can see uh, these magnets are really cool i'll make a link in the descriptions to show you how uh, where i bought it i think it's an italian company so for europeans it can be interesting so what i'm going to do now is use this copper wire but not for the wire itself use the external uh, shelf and i'm going to do these uh, small tubes that are going to be able to distribute water but I want to do something modular, so I'm also going to do another piece that will be useful and used uh, in case I want to use another statue, another figure instead of this one. Of course, this one's gonna have a magnet on it too. And there you go, I can put on a statue. So I'm gonna be able to put a king or something else instead of the Mother Mary if I want to. What I'm gonna do now is a base coat. Uh, that is gonna uh, harden the craft and give a nice uh, brown base coat. I'm going for brown base coat uh, since I want to do some very light limestone. And I'm gonna mix in uh, half paint and uh, half uh, Mod Podge. Now this is the very hard Mod Podge, the one meant for exterior, uh, meant for uh, furnitures that are gonna stay outside. So it really hardens really hard. So as you can see, I'm also doing the bottom of the pieces that will prevent warping. So as you can see now I'm doing the midtones uh, with a salmon color. There you go, mixing in some uh, yellow, some burnt sienna and some whites. And I'm gonna brush gently, cover most of it, but also leave some of the dark brown. And finally I'm gonna end up with uh, highlights uh, using nearly pure whites. This is really dry brushing. So I wasn't really happy with the bottom of my uh, fountain because uh, I'm gonna put something clear here. So I actually wanted to uh, to be able to see through the water. I've decided to try to engrave with a ballpoint pen the bottom of the fountain. I guess it turned out okay, but it wasn't the best idea. I think I really should have gone with a foam. But hey, mistakes are made for learning things, right? So I'm gonna use this uh, Wizard Orb uh, Army Painter color for the bottom. I chose to make a greenish uh, kind of pond. Now you can find several colors on the bottom of a fountain. It could be blue, you know, with a reflection of the sky. It could also be green if you have some greenery uh, around, some trees. Uh, or it depends if there are some algae in it. I chose to go basically with green tones. But the gaps weren't deep enough. 
So what I ended up doing was using lighter color to make the stumps pop out a little. Then I'm gonna use a toothpick and some yellow to make some reflections. The reflections you could find uh, at the bottom of a fountain. So I'm using first yellow and then I'm using an even thinner toothpick, one that I've cut it with the exacto knife. Uh, and I'm using some white just to enhance the highlights on some spots because there's gonna be kind of a pattern. Uh, it's a wave pattern. It's actually a reflection of the waves underneath at the bottom of the fountain. I think it looks pretty nice. Could be better. But it's alright, it looks pretty nice. Of course there's going to be liquid on top of that. This is just going to be the reflection at the bottom. So there you go, what I've tried to use was this mastic, because I've already used it before. I made these rivers uh, using uh, this clear coke and they turned out amazing. I mean the coke was really inexpensive and it cured completely clear. And uh, it kind of settled uh, pretty well. I was able to do some waves, but I was pretty sure I was going to be able to make still water with very few waves. So I wanted to try this very cheap alternative. However, it didn't really turn out great. The coke was way too dense. Maybe it's because it was new. Maybe it was because it wasn't exactly the same one I used before. Or maybe it was just because the piece was so damn small. So this being so viscous, it was pretty hard to work with it. So I did manage to do some pretty cool looking uh, ripples. At least they look cool from above. The problem was that they didn't look nearly as cool from the side. And also they really obstructed uh, the view of the bottom of the fountain. So um, I really wasn't pleased with the results. I mean, it was okay, but it wasn't great. It was standing out too much. So I actually ended up using some resin uh, to cover up what I did. And I was actually able to save up some resin since I already used the clear coke. Because the resin is quite expensive. But I decided to use some resin just for the top part to be able to get something a bit more flat. And also a bit more transparent. Because it was actually all the ripples uh, inside the clear coke that was preventing us from seeing the bottom of the fountain. Now I'm going to paint up the statue. Because actually, uh, statues uh, during the Middle Ages were painted. They weren't painted white, you know, they were actually nicely painted. So I'm doing this Mother Mary figure, this, you know, saint, uh, sainty figure. Final step of the tutorial. Just take paper clips, cut them, bend them just the right way. What you want to do is have a slight arc, uh, a sort of turn at the top of the paper clip. Uh, then, you know, going straight down, just like water, you know, pouring out. And then what you're going to do is use uh, the hot glue and, uh, you know, put some hot glue all around the paper clip just to, to simulate uh, water, uh, water flowing down. So this is the final product, the different fountains we've made. I think they look pretty cool. Uh, even if the water still could have come out a little better so you don't really have to use uh, magnets or do something modular you can do a standalone fountain but what I really like about it is that I'm gonna be able to uh, change uh, the figure when I want to I can put a statue of a king instead I could put up a monster if I want this fountain to be in a, some kind of evil castle I could really you know use the same fountain but really change uh, completely the fountain uh, depending on the place the characters are in I can put on the gargoyles, change them, I can do really whatever I want. The only thing that isn't going to change is the overall shape of the fountain, but then again, that's why I made another one. There you go guys, I hope you liked the tutorial, and if you did, like, share, subscribe, uh, leave me a comment, give me feedback. Um, I should be able to upload more videos uh, since I have finally moved out. Just bear in mind, I still have a daytime job, so it obviously takes time to make these tutorials and edit them. So I'm basically doing it whenever I can. Um, I've also been experimenting a little bit with uh, stop motion, trying to make uh, stop motion uh, puppets for animation. So maybe in a few weeks I'll show you a video of my endeavor, showing all my failings and uh, my experimenting, because it's mostly, for me at least, one of the most interesting things uh, in crafting. Uh, trying to learn new stuff, uh, watch a bunch of tutorials, uh, compile the ideas, find new ways, test the materials, fail horribly, 
spend hours to fail and then try again with a new better technique that fails also and then try again and uh, and get hopefully at the end a good result so in any case uh, you guys take care i'll see you later for a new episode of lonvator slayer see you